Thank you. The tree of life. It has millions of leaves. Each is a species about which we may know huge amounts of information. Every branch tells a remarkable evolutionary story, and there are millions of such branches. Every one of us here at the conference is studying this tree of life one way or another. But the question that interests me is, can we see the tree of life that we're all studying? Well, in a way, we can, because diagrams such as this enable us to label the leaves on such a tree and show its structure, leading to a common ancestor. But there are four serious problems with this way of visualising the tree. Number one, we can't upscale this to view really large trees. Even a thousand ticks represents a serious problem for this visualisation method. With projects such as the Open Tree of Life project, now producing or aiming to produce trees with not a thousand, but millions of ticks, we're nowhere near to being able to visualise those remarkable data sets. The second problem is intuition. It's not very intuitive to look at this. The structure of the tree doesn't leap out of the screen at us. And the bigger the tree gets, the worse the intuition. Thirdly, we have huge amounts of additional information, metadata, that we want to put on this. And there's simply not the space for it. Very little space on the leaf and even less or nothing on the interior nodes. And finally, as scientists, we want to excite the public about our subjects, ecology and evolution, around the tree of life. And to do that, we need a much more beautiful and immersive view of the tree of life. There are other methods of viewing the tree of life, but I'm not satisfied that these the problems, any of the four, are fully resolved. You don't have to take my word for it, because, for example, Rod Page, who studied this in some detail, was saying just last month, Displaying large trees is a hard problem that has so far resisted solution. We are still waiting for the equivalent of Google Maps. And if that's a challenge, how likely are we to achieve the dream of Hillis, who wants to see the entire tree of life on a small mobile device, like a smartphone? Could this really happen, or is it just a dream? Well, I'm going to present to you today a new way of visualising the tree of life, which is called OneZoom. And I'd also like to point out that this is the first public presentation of this method. So, there it is. This is for mammals. Doesn't look very impressive yet. It looks a bit <coughs> like a tree, but it's also like a map, because you can zoom in on any part of it. For example, here, I'm zooming in on primates. And within primates, I can zoom in on the great apes, and within them, of course, onto ourselves. And because of this zooming, <laughs> because of this zooming, there's no limit to the amount of information that can be put on these leaves. Here we've got links to Wikipedia, Latin names, common names, the red list, conservation status. But we could have maps, photographs, diagrams, <coughs> other graphs, anything we want. Not just, not just on the leaves, but also on the interior nodes. For example, here, there's a little pie chart on the interior node showing the red list status of that clade. There's also the date of the node, the period of geological history. The uh, phylogenetic diversity is there. This is a very natural way to browse a large and complicated data set, because we're already used to exploring a large and complicated data set, the world around us. And we do that by moving closer to things that we're interested in, to see them in more detail, just as this does. It's also intuitive to see the structure of the tree, because this, for instance, here, is a very balanced node. There's an equal diversity, or nearly equal, coming off on both sides, as reflected in the angles, it looks like a Y shape, and the thicknesses of the branches. Whereas, further down, we've got a very unbalanced node, which is like a T-shape, with most of the diversity going straight on and a tiny branch going off at a right angle. And so the structure, the topology of this tree is immediately obvious to us. Now, the branch length, the timings of this, could be reflected in the branch length in the future, but I think it's quite intuitive to reflect shape and topology as shape here, and the timings of the tree as something different to shape. For example, with the numbers, but also with a colour scheme according to the period in geological history, and also with a growth animation in scale time, 
of the tree progressing through the years. I'll just say a couple of words about how this is done. This essentially uses the same kind of formulas that are used for drawing fractals. You may have seen beautiful pictures of plants such as ferns and trees created with very simple formulas before that you can zoom in on and see lots and lots of details. That same technique is employed here, except that rather than just being pretty details that look like a tree, it's reflecting the data itself and it's labelled with the important information that we want to see. So I'm just going to stop that now and show you a 408,000 nose tree. There it is. This is bacteria. And you can see immediately at a glance that how unbalanced that tree is. There's a stick that goes straight up with tiny little groups going off to one side and then some really balanced nodes way up here that are really obvious if you zoom in on them. But rather than show you around this by hand, I'm actually going to demonstrate the search option here. You can jump straight to, to leaves that you want to search for, but here I'm going to show you a flight animation going through to the uh, leaf at the end. And this gives you an idea of perspective from the tip of the tree to the, um, to the roots of the tree. So as you're zooming in, you really get an idea of the scale of just how, what 400,000 nodes looks like. Uh, um, and you can see that already we've zoomed in so far that the original <laughs> image, if it were here, is now several kilometres across. And by the end, it's going to be thousands of kilometres across. In some parts of this, it's even bigger than the observable universe. <laughs> So what I envisage for this right now is that scientists will use it as supplementary information in their papers to demonstrate these amazing data sets that they're all collecting. I also imagine on websites and in talks like this, it's just running in a web browser, as you may have noticed, a single portable file that you can edit in a text file to put your own data in and then open in any web browser including on a small portable device, although to be optimal for that it may need a little bit of further work. There's nothing wrong with having a small screen because you can just zoom in to reveal further details. There's nothing wrong with having a processor that isn't quite so fast because you can minus on the detail button to reduce the amount of processing power needed for this. I also envisage that this idea will be useful for visualising data outside of biology, for example in uh, computing in complex financial data sets, complex industrial processes, and also even the contents of our computer or the internet. For example, this is my tree of thanks for this talk, but I'm not done yet, I'll come back to that in a moment. So for me, the most exciting thing about this, looking forward into the more distant future, is the perspective, the possibility of having the equivalent of Google Earth in biology. Westmead said, as, just as Google Earth revolutionised the way we look at geography, a sophisticated tree of life browser could change the way we look at life all around us. And I really think that's true. For example, imagining typing in Darwin's finches, pressing fly, and getting a dramatic fly through the tree to the finches. Not just like this, but with artist's impressions of the dinosaurs, with photographs of the Archaeopteryx fossil, with all the writing about it for you to explore, right the way to the end with the radiation all made clear, with pictures of the beaks, with maps showing the ranges on the islands. Wouldn't that be amazing? And what else? Well, how about all the field biologists and amateur naturalists, twitchers? They're all using identification books on paper. What if instead they had something like this populated with all life on Earth and everything they needed to know to identify it? They would do away with that. They'd be going around with their smartphones. They could log in, for example, and say, I've seen this, and it would be recorded. And it would be recorded not just for their own records, but for the whole of science to then use as a huge data set to draw further conclusions from. But also, what about all these people that are questioning or still making up their mind about evolution? At the moment, we can show them a few species and we can show them a few isolated branches and explain how we thought those uh, evolutionary links took place. But it's a much more powerful experience to show them what a million tips look like with all the photographs and just how naturally and beautifully they fall into a tree shape before we even look at 
genetic data, just from looking at the photographs. And then, rather than being shown what we want to show them, a few branches that we think are easy to explain, for them to be able to choose which part of the tree interests them, and go into that part of the tree and see that wherever they go, there's an explanation, there's evidence, there's pictures of fossils, there are interesting and exciting things to see. That, I think, is the most exciting vision looking forward. To realise that, the equivalent of Google Maps for biology is possible. It would take a huge collaborative effort of all of us here, but I do believe that in a number of years' time, that can happen, and it will happen, and this is the first glimpse of what it might perhaps look like. So with that, I should just zoom you a little bit through my tree of thanks. A lot of people have given me advice and support and I'd like to at least have them all on the screen at some point. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much all for coming to my talk.